Hello and welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Ian Kazat. Volodymyr Zelensky spoke to Xi Jinping, and it comes days after China's ambassador to France caused an uproar. We find out what all this means for China, Europe, and Taiwan. With me to discuss this are Miao Boya, Taipei City Councillor from the Social Democratic Party, and Tang Xiaocheng, National Zhengzhi Uni Institute of International Relations Professor and Lev Nachman, also of National Zhengzhi University and Social Sciences Assistant Professor. Councillor Mao, Professor Hi. Tang, Professor Nachman, very warm welcome to the mm -hmm. show today. The long-awaited phone call between Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and Chinese leader Xi Jinping finally took place. It was the first conversation between the two leaders since Russia's invasion of Ukraine 14 months ago. Beijing's readout said she told Zelensky China always stands on the side of peace. Its core stance is to facilitate talks for peace. Mutual respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity is the political basis of China-Ukrainian relations. And China will also send a special representative to Ukraine and other countries to hold talks with all parties. Now, meanwhile, in Zelensky's nightly address to the nation, he spoke of a long and mostly reasonable conversation with Xi. It was an opportunity, Zelensky said, to use, quote, China's political power to reinforce the rules that peace should be built upon. And he said Ukraine and China are equally interested in the strength of the sovereignty of nations and territorial integrity. <laughs> Professor Natman, if I can come to you first. So what did you make of the two statements? Uh, I think ultimately it's good to keep in mind that these two leaders talk. Uh, in a time of war, and especially in such a contentious moment as this, it is always better that leaders are talking. Uh, and I think these comments reflect that uh, there is perhaps very good intention on Xi Jinping's part to try to play an important role in, in the peace negotiation process. We know that she is one of the few people that has direct access to Putin in Russia. Uh, the big challenge, though, and many people's concern is that, you know, China could say all of these very good, positive things about wanting to play a role as peacekeeper. But at the same time, looking at how they treat Taiwan across the Taiwan Strait gives many people pause to their statements. Mm. Mm -hmm. Councillor Miao, would yes. you agree with that? Does China want to play role as peacemaker? I think China is uh, using the uh, Russian-Ukraine war as a leverage to blackmail the Western world. So uh, I think, of course, uh, Xi Jinping take Zelensky's phone call is a nice gesture. But I think, yes, it is just a nice gesture because uh, when, when you look at uh, uh, China and Russian relationship, China is still the biggest supporter of uh, Russian at uh, economical ways, and uh, China is still a potential military supporter of, uh, of uh, Russia. So uh, we still must be very careful that China it, are, are they playing the two methods, you know, the two phases and double tactics to, uh, to both uh, Russian and uh, Europe? So yes, we should take um, cautious. Mm. Professor Tang, so mm -hmm. China is saying one thing but doing another? Mm, somewhat like that. <laughs> I will say, firstly, China might tries to contrast his own image to the United States. Mm. So this is in competition of, with the US, essentially. Yes, yeah. in terms of peace and war, reconciliation and confrontation. Yeah, so China tries to improve its own image uh, mm. uh, through this kind of uh, talk. And secondly, the war fatigue, because there are demonstrations in, uh, in European countries mm. uh, very often. And thirdly, damage control. So we'll say, maybe we'll discuss it uh, later, because the uh, Chinese ambassador to France has made something uh, unthinkable. Mm -hmm. So Xi Jinping tries to, mm -hmm. to control mm -hmm. the damage that the ambassador mm -hmm. has made. This brings mm -hmm. me on to okay. my next question. Mm -hmm. Professor Nachman, so about the timing, is it all about damage control? I mean, can we sort of see that the Ukrainians were quite smart? You know, they kind of threw a lifeline to Xi in the middle of a diplomatic crisis. So there's been talk about this uh, Zelensky Xi phone call for quite some time. Uh, so I, I don't think it's just damage control. It most certainly is going to play a role of damage control. Uh, but whether or not that was the main intention, I think it's going to be very hard to sparse out. I think mm -hmm. the timing is most certainly good for China to be able to try to uh, fix what was definitely a very bad image for them. 
Uh, at the same time, I think because there's been so much dialogue about will there, won't there be a Zelensky Xi phone call, I also think that this has been something long in the works. Mm. Councillor Miao, so um, in terms of uh, negotiated peace settlement, um, let, let's put aside Lu Xiaoyez, the uh, Chinese ambassador to France. Let's put aside those comments, first of all. But what would be the next step? So what, what can China ostensibly try to do in terms of next steps? Next step? Uh, I don't think that China actually have so-called next step because uh, in the uh, Russia-Ukraine war, China is always playing the leverage, uh, so to say. China is trying to throw their chips at the right timing. And uh, of course, the phone call is one of the chips. Mm -hmm. And uh, China holds it for 14 months after Xi Jinping even visit Moscow and meet Putin. And right now, that China knows that uh, they need to be, you know, give a nice gesture to Europe, especially Eastern Europe. Mm. So uh, yeah, just take a phone call and say something nice. And, and if we look into the, uh, you know, the, the talk, the dialogue, uh, Xi Jinping even mentioned that, oh, a nuclear war is not good for everyone. Mm. But I've noticed that he said this to a nation that don't have any nuclear weapons. Mm. So it looks, to me, it, it, <laughs> Here's like a threat. Threat. Mm. It, it's not a you know, a not so nice mm. <laughs> gesture. Mm. So uh, I think the next step is that China wants to play a more important role uh, in this crisis in the in the in the world. And of course, I agree with professors that uh, he wants to be a contrast. And uh, China is still trying to blame the war to the U.S. Mm and wants to play a mm. role that uh, we are a peacemaker. Yeah, so how yes. can you be a peacemaker if you're not neutral? And, and, and they would say they are neutral mm. because uh, they, they, they are playing that um, uh, uh, I meet Putin and I have a phone call with Zelensky and mm. I told them that we, we should talk. But uh, it, China didn't say con the, the, about the conditions, mm. you know. He, he didn't, Xi Jinping didn't tell Putin that you should uh, withdraw your uh, military and out of uh, Ukraine's territory. No, he didn't mention that. Mm. He just said peace to Zelensky. Mm. And it's very unfair. And, but it, it is always the tactics that China use to uh, deal with Taiwan. Because uh, in, the, in the recent 74 years, we are under the Chinese mil military threat every day. But China wants to put the responsibility on Taiwan mm. that Taiwan should be a peacemaker, not a troublemaker. Mm. You know, it's the same tactics, but it's now using to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Professor I think um, neutral, the, 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 the status of neutrality is one thing. But more important is China seems to be the only country in the world who is, which is capable of playing the role of a mediator in the uh, uh, Ukraine Russian and why is that? conflict. That's the only one. And why is he, that? Why is that? Because he has the capacity. Yeah? Because the other countries, for instance, from the West, nobody will be accepted by the, by the Russians. Mm. Yeah? On the other countries, they are much, more, much smaller yeah, for in, in terms of capacity. Mm. But China, yes. And, the, the relationship between China and Russia is okay, it's intact. And also, the relationship from, between China and, and Ukraine is not so bad, it's still okay, yeah? Because uh, the, the Ukraine, especially the uh, President Zelensky, mm. has never has criticized scored, China. Never, mm. never criticized China, mm. yeah? This is a very important point. Mm. I think mm -hmm. one perhaps challenge though is that mm -hmm. there's trust issues with China. There's enough mm -hmm. data points that China has been supporting Russia's efforts mm -hmm. in Ukraine. There's enough data points that show that uh, China has not condemned Russia's actions uh, in a way that actually presents them as a peacemaker. Uh, mm -hmm. When we talk about the idea of trying to moderate this kind of situation, mm -hmm. China has really yet to sort of prove that they can go beyond just this initial action. So, so while I most certainly am hopeful because peace is good and we should be trying for peace, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of skepticism around China's intentions because 
their past actions have not really matched their new words. Mm. Uh, and and as, as hopeful as I, I, I am that they do, it's it's kind of, uh, I'm still somewhat pessimistic. Yeah, and, and this is the interesting fact. I mean, mm -hmm. Councillor Miao also mentioned, you know, that there have been Chinese parts found in the in munitions and arms that have been found by the Ukrainians. Um, so, however, there is a huge willingness or a huge desire to bring China in. Um, let me just quote you um, some of the reaction that we've had so far. So Spain's um, EFE news agency has mm -hmm. said that Joseph Borrell said that this was the first step to rapprochement. Now, kind of um, balancing this a bit more is um, Ursula von der Leyen's spokesman, uh, who said it was an important and long overdue first step by China. Um, and the Americans were skeptical, but also welcomed, you know, a phone call. I mean, as you said, mm -hmm. who, who wouldn't? Um, Councillor, Councillor Miao, yes. do you want to um, talk about, uh, to sum up, how encouraging do you think that the world should, how encouraged should the world be in terms of this phone call? Uh, you know, the dialogue is always a good thing. So yes, it's a good thing, but not so good as everyone thinks about because uh, it's a very traditional Chinese Communist Party's tactics that they would go a very huge step forward and uh, a little backward and that will make everyone think, yeah, they are they are listen to, listening to us and uh, the, 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 the dialogue is uh, finally works. No, mm. it's not. And, and, and because if we see at uh, the past 14 months, the China never condemns Russian and China never promises not to provide uh, military aid to Russian. Mm. So China did not promise anything and China did not join the, the, any, any effort to restrain uh, mm -hmm. the, the Russian invasion. So it's a phone call and the dialogue is good, but it did not uh, lead China to any substantial actions, no. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think it shows that uh, uh, after all those 14 months, uh, the, the dialogue between the world and China has a very little, uh, uh, very little progress but uh, it's it's because that the CCP the Chinese Communist Party have to show the uh, the, the you know the nice gesture to the world for now mm -hmm. but uh, uh, when 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 I I've been asked what is the CCP's real intention the true intention we must look at what they actually are doing mm -hmm. you know it, it the the actual actual substantial actions are the real intention of China. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's um, now go to Lou's actual comments and why he caused an uproar. Let's go to his interview on French TV, Bing Wang and James Lin report. China's ambassador to France, Lu Saye, is under fire. In an interview with French television network LCI, Lu questioned the sovereignty of ex-Soviet states. Member ces pays ex Union soviétique, ils n'ont pas, ils n'ont pas le statut, euh, comment dire, effectif dans le droit international parce qu'il n'y a pas d'accord international pour concrétiser leur statut d'un pays souverain. The Baltic states, who were a part of the Soviet Union, condemned the Chinese ambassador's statements. The foreign minister of Estonia hit back on Twitter saying, The comments by the Chinese representative on independent and sovereign states are false and a misinterpretation of history. Baltic states under international law have been sovereign since 1918, but were occupied for 50 years. Based on the fact that uh, the French, uh, the Chinese ambassador to France has a history of uh, very controversial comments, uh, we don't know if uh, this is simply his opinion. Some might say that this is a, a major shift in uh, China's foreign policy. It's not the first time the Chinese ambassador to France has hit the news. Just last year, he said Taiwanese people will be re-educated if the country is taken by China, which sees Taiwan as part of its own territory. In response to the statement about the former Soviet states, 80 delegates from the European Parliament have sent a letter to the French foreign minister requesting to censure the Chinese ambassador. And officials across Europe have asked China to clarify its stance. 
Bing Wang and James Lin. Professor Tang, in your view, did Liu's comments reflect his own personal views or the party's? I don't think it's appropriate uh, for a diplomat to say some things like that. Yeah? Even Beijing and also the, uh, the, um, the embassy, uh, Chinese embassy in Paris has distanced, distanced themselves uh, to this kind of uh, a talk mm -hmm. and to, to its own uh, ambassador. And do you believe, so, do you believe that they are distancing themselves? Do you believe yeah, that yeah, it's yeah. just personal Because the, spokesper the spokesperson has made a very clear uh, statement to so distance, <laughs> distance, so you take uh, distance that on face value. Uh, themselves. You take uh, that on face value. Yeah, more or less, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> yeah, the, a, a good diplomat uh, shouldn't do that mm. uh, because, effectively, uh, uh, in, in effect, a good diplomat should do effective communications. Yeah, and should also try to res to solve problems, not create problems. He creates a lot of problems mm -hmm. uh, between uh, China and, uh, and some uh, Western, uh, some U European countries, and that's why I would say it is uh, maybe he is not uh, very uh, well prepared for this kind of talk. Mm -hmm. Or from the other side, the moderator has challenged him <laughs> mm -hmm. too much, mm -hmm. so he feel him feel himself mm -hmm. very very. Um, not in the position to do the the right job and to give the right answer. Mm. So that's why I think it's a it's an incident. Okay, Professor Nachman. This is not the first time he said these sort of uh, pretty outrageous comments. Uh, and even though there's been a lot of dialogue back and forth about whether or not you know wolf warrior diplomacy is over or whether it's back, uh, this uh, remains to be one of the critical diplomats that continues to uh, really hurt. The PRC's international image, mm. and you have to think at this point: Why has she not recalled him? Why mm. is he still there? Why mm. is he still allowed to make these comments? Mm. Uh, even if they are distancing themselves, they are not removing him from his position, mm. uh, and they are not actually taking away the megaphone that he currently has to make these kinds of comments. Mm. Councillor Miao, and I think it's a daily normal for Taiwanese to face uh, hundreds of thousands of Lusai every day. <laughs> You know, <laughs> China is not a player that follows international rules. China is a player that don't follow any rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, China is very used to uh, deny other nations sovereignty and uh, trying to, you know, make ma very awkward uh, uh, imp interpretation of other nations' history. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's our daily life. And uh, unfortunately that the uh, Europe, especially Eastern Europe, experienced this for the very first time. Uh, mm. And uh, I think that uh, uh, China is still playing you know, the, the double strategies in, in this, uh, you, you may call incident or not so <laughs> incident, <laughs> because um, after China take a very big step forward, and uh, I, I think China is trying to, uh, is attempt to find what's the bottom line of Europe, mm -hmm. especially after uh, the French, French president visit China and uh, he says something common uh, of Taiwan's situation. China wants to test what is the bottom line of France. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it, can France tolerate a figure like Lu Saye, mm -hmm. and then he can still uh, stay in France as an ambassador or, mm -hmm. or not? And uh, China is trying to, you know, uh, the, e the Eastern Europe it got very uh, angry and China said, okay, okay, I will take Zelensky phone call and uh, don't be mad. Mm. And if Europe accept that mm. and China knows that, wow, uh, you know, he can, Ch Chinese can usually know that how many chips are they holding on and what can they exchange for? Mm. Professor Tan, it's a very good point. Mm. Both, both points by our other guests. Uh, this is not good for China's reputation. China mm -hmm. itself has said that the ambassador's views are not in line mm -hmm. with its position, the official position. So why didn't they punish? Why haven't they punished Lu Xiaoye? I don't know, because maybe uh, they, are, they are making some thoughts on, on this issue. Yeah? But uh, I think uh, Xi Jinping's um, position as I just mentioned, is a kind of damage control. 
yeah, is try to play down the uh, the, uh, the the impact. Professor mm -hmm. Nachman, I would like actually your um, opinion. You know, you're both experts in international relations. What basis did Lou have for actually saying what he said, which is that the so-called ex-Soviet, some of them um, ex-Soviet mm -hmm. occupied states, are not countries under international law? What, what basis? Oh, there isn't one. He's wrong. Like, it's as simple as, as he is uh, saying something that is so emphatically not true that that's why it's caused such a big reaction. It's, mm -hmm. it's to say that uh, sovereign states that are internationally recognized, have formal mm -hmm. diplomatic relations, have their own constitutions, civil societies, institutions, aren't actually there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's why it's such a shocking statement for a diplomat of all people, a diplomat who's supposed to be well-versed in these kinds mm -hmm. of, of, mm -hmm. of conversations, to make something that's so outlandishly wrong. Mm. So uh, do, you, do you buy the argument that he was not well prepared for a media interview? No. No, I think that's not true because, again, he's a professional diplomat who's been a professional diplomat for quite some time. Mm. Uh, I think saying that he's not prepared to comment on the recognition of a, well, of, of a group of well-established countries is, is, is a, a bit of a ludicrous excuse on, on his behalf. Yeah. And, and so, of course, um, whilst there's a focus on the three Baltic states, um, maybe I can put this question to Councillor Miao. Uh, you know, what we're really talking about here is Ukraine. So um, Ukraine being an ex-Soviet state. Um, the Wall Street Journal wrote that Lou Chayet embarrassed Emmanuel Macron. Do you, what's your take on that? I think that the Lou Chayet's um, incident shows that Emmanuel Macron didn't know how to deal with China didn't know how to deal with CCP government because... Do, do you think he was being played? He, he was being a little bit naive because... Or, or, or I, I would say that the Europe still thinks that China is uh, a, a very rational, <laughs> you know, rational nation that could, could, could deal them with dialogue or, uh, you know, talks or give some nice gesture and they would give nice gestures back. No, it's not like this because uh, in all these 74 years, Taiwan, we, what, what's our experience is that uh, China is trying to push your bottom line back, back and again back. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, uh, take a step backwards, then China will say, oh, thank you. And uh, take, they, they will take a step forward. So when Macron take a step backwards, of course, Xi Jinping, yes, thank you. And uh, we know that uh, France needs China more than China needs France. And so I, I know that you can, you can make Lu Saye go to anywhere. And I will make Lu Saye. He has a very big microphone because he is the ambassador of China in France, mm. one of the most important country in the world. So everything he said will be immediately immediately um, noticed by the world. Mm. And so he said, oh, the, oh those ex-Soviet country is not a sovereign country. Yes, mm. and Europe is mad, and so what? Mm. You know, the Chinese will say, so what? Oh, okay, what, what you all can do is to call my ambassador to explain, yes, I will give you an explain, explanation that is not our official stand. So what can you do? Mm. You know, this is Chinese Communist Party. They did not follow any international rules mm -hmm. you know th that that's the all the conclusion after all these 74 years Taiwan knows and right now the world should knows that too mm. um, Professor Tan mm -hmm. so conversely however um, in contrast to what Councillor Miao has said could we see that the phone call between Xi Jinping mm -hmm. and Volodymyr Zelensky is actually a win for Macron no, yeah, more or less. I will say um, this is another chapter of reconciliation process from China. Yeah, because as, as we all know, they reconcile between uh, uh, Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia. And now they are trying to, to also play the media, uh, mediated role uh, between Israel, Israel and, the, uh, and uh, Palestine. So this is actually the the reconciliation process uh, from China. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the Ukraine and uh, so uh, and the Russian war is in, in only a chapter for that. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this kind of image that China tries to prove or tries to give to the world is a contrast, as I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's a contrast to the to the West mm -hmm. because make make peace, not make war. This is much more valuable mm -hmm. for the for the whole people, for the whole for, for the whole. Uh, world, world, um, and that's the, the image, okay. or that's the message uh, China <laughs> tries to send. You know, speaking of contrasts, the biggest mm -hmm. contrast, however, is China can s say that it wants to play a mediator in Israel-Palestine mm -hmm. and between Russia and Ukraine, but when it's threatening war in Taiwan almost every day, it's a big contrast for the world to see as well. And this again is why, you know, I welcome the efforts and I hope they are genuine, but it's very difficult to take the PRC seriously when military threats against Taiwan are such a regular part of their diplomacy. No, it's different because they consider this as, as uh, internal affairs. It's still this war. Is, this, this is, yeah, this is war, but it's a civil war. It, it's it's not a war. But, it's, but that's an interesting point, Professor, mm -hmm. because um, let's get into sort of the detail. Mm -hmm. So what is China's position on Crimea? China's position on Crimea is actually not very clear. Mm. Yeah? On the one hand, it supports the, the Russians. Yeah. But on the other hand, it, support, uh, it supports the, uh, the Ukraine. Mm. So it is unclear. So f for the outsiders, mm. it's really uh, difficult mm. to, to realize, to understand what kind of standards uh, that uh, China has on, on uh, Crimea. Yeah. So, it, it is, uh, so that's why. I think that the ambassador from France mm -hmm. is not in the position to make this kind of statement to satisfy all sides, mm -hmm. yeah? Because the, maybe he, the, the, the ambassador, he said what he really thinks is right. Mm -hmm. But whether that is right or not must be judged by the others. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why I will say this is a very, very difficult situation uh, for China. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think China's, um, you know, position on sovereignty and territorial borders is definitely under the spotlight and will continue to be as we go on. Councillor Miao, um, let's play a clip of China's press conference when pressed about Ukraine's status. This is after the um, Lushaye comments came out. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look. You <laughs> 只有主权国家才能成为联合国的正式会员国。中国根据联合国宪章宗旨和原则，以及和平共处五项原则，同乌克兰建立和发展着良好的国家间关系。So, Councillor Mao, as as Professor Nachman pointed out, you know this is actually about Taiwan, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You know, uh, when talk about Taiwan, China always said that Ch Taiwan is China Chinese uh, in 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 a problem, in an issue, not a <laughs> nation to nation issue. And also, uh, China would say that, uh, you know, the sovereign of the nation and the integrity of territory should be respect. And it all mentioned to that Taiwan is a part of China as their stand, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, but you just mentioned a very uh, awkward problem to China is that what about the Crimea, mm. you know? So uh, as I mentioned that, what's the Chinese real intention? You have to look at his uh, actual action. What is the action of China? You mm. know, uh, uh, for example, like Crimea, China never condemns Russian of invasion, in, occupation in of Crimea. Right. Yes, no, never till now, mm. right? And uh, China never, never supports that uh, Russian should, uh, you know, give Crimea back to Ukraine. Mm. And uh, when Lu Xiaoye was asked about Crimea on TV, and they said that, oh, no, and, and, and he said that, no, 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 the, all this Eastern Europe nation is not a nation. You know, so that is China, Chinese real stand of Crimea. Mm. And uh, what's the, you know, the spokesperson on the, you know, conference, uh, press conference is not there, you know, it, it's just like a play. You know, uh, in Chinese, they w w we, we have a term of qian tai ci, you know, <laughs> it's that one thing we, ch the Chinese talk in front of a public, but the other thing that we did in under the table. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chinese government is still playing this 
on international society. When we are looking at what is the genuine uh, intention of China, we should look at what Chinese government actually done, but not what they said, mm -hmm. because they can change what they said every day mm -hmm. or even every hour. Mm -hmm. Professor Tan, do you mm -hmm. want to address that? And also, just the issue of, you know, China's position is that Taiwan is part of China, mm -hmm. but that is China's position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taiwan's does, position does, does China's is position. different depending on who <coughs> is in government. Yeah, you might. Right. I, I mean, uh, this is uh, China, Chinese position. This, this is correct because it's written in the, in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So they cannot change this for the moment. Mm. So that's why it causes lots of troubles. But from the other side, uh, some of the countries, they accept the so-called one China, uh, not principle, but one China uh, policy. Yeah? So one China policy says something, yeah? because China has the, the diplomatic relations with most of the country in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So they think that is the status of Taiwan still belongs to them, mm -hmm. and also the, uh, the cross-strait uh, relationship uh, be, uh, still belongs to the uh, internal affairs of the, of the Chinese. Mm -hmm. So they have their stance, mm -hmm. and many countries, they support this, but the situation today is changing. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, not the same as before mm -hmm. because of the, the rival between uh, China on one hand and the United States. Mm -hmm. So uh, many, many countries, mm -hmm. they try to, to Many countries do follow the one, one China they principle or policy, no, however, whether verbally, Taiwan... Verbally, but not f factually. Okay. My mm -hmm. understanding, maybe Professor Lackman, but however, whether Taiwan is part of China is it also a different issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so China has its one China principle, mm -hmm. and almost every country has their own version of a one China policy. And these languages vary. So how Japan describes their stance on one China is different from how the United States describes their stance on one China. Mm -hmm. uh, and what the PRC will say is that all countries respect its one China principle. That's not actually true. Every country has their own one China policy that, again, is very often vague and, and ambiguous uh, about how they actually address Taiwan's agency to the PRC. Mm -hmm. So and it's also a matter of, of international norm of these sort of declarations of, of military threats that the PRC are making. Whether or not the PRC says that Taiwan is part of China is almost secondary if they're actually trying to engage in an act of war, that's not going to help its international reputation, which is ultimately what, what the PRC is trying to do. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now from Vilnius in Lithuania, one of the countries Lu Xiaoye said wasn't recognized under international law, I spoke to Dovile Shakalina, a Lithuanian MP and member of the National Security and Defense, Defense Committee. Shakalina is also vice chair of the Taiwan Parliamentary Relations. I began by asking whether Lu's comments expressed his own views, as according to Beijing. I don't think that we do think individually, independently, and we do have a personal opinion because uh, experience uh, of my colleagues here in our national parliament with meetings uh, uh, with Chinese diplomats uh, is very clear. They quite often read from a page. They don't even express uh, their opinions in the closed private meetings where there is nobody else in the room. So in that situation, nobody should be mistaken. There was uh, no chance of slip of the tongue, of a uh, personal uh, subjective opinion of uh, this diplomat or um, mistake. It was, of course, as always, in such an authoritarian state which controls every citizen of itself, only a statement that was completely in line with Chinese government's opinion. And the statement that was made uh, afterwards by the Chinese ministry uh, simply uh, is, well, I'd say a game, because in uh, this situation, uh, the goal of the game was to see what would happen. Would other states defend those three European Union states, uh, Baltic states, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, uh, how uh, united the front of defense would be uh, would it be possible to slip in doubt or confusion? And so he was saying that there were, he was effectively testing, testing the waters. And do you think that there was a direct link between uh, his Lu Xiaoye's comments and Macron visiting Beijing and 
those media comments that he made. It's not uh, a coincidence that ambassador of China in France made such a comment about uh, um, sovereignty of uh, uh, Baltic states and uh, uh, former uh, states of uh, Soviet Union. And it's not a coincidence uh, that after that, just a couple of days ago, uh, in the Global Times, uh, an article appeared, uh, very, I'd say, interesting article with uh, a very tough and categorical opinion. We should not view um, the China-EU relations through the prism of the Ukraine crisis and sacrifice China-EU relations and interest of China to develop its relations with the U.S. And in that article, uh, what we claim is that uh, in their view, more and more European politicians agree with calls of Europe to achieve strategic autonomy. And then we quote Macron a lot, and then we talk about the visit of Macron to China a lot. And there are two conclusions that we must make from this. So first of all, that China is using Macron quite actively in its strategy to, first of all, sow discord between European Union and United States. And secondly, having in mind that United States. United States has also taken on responsibility and expressed politically quite clearly that we are also going to defend Taiwan. And in that sense, so that looks like a preparation for the next stage while trying uh, to so discord between EU and US, which would be, well, critically damaging to our collective defense, and at the same time preparing uh, for well, or threatening invasion into Taiwan, which China openly declared several times already in the past few uh, months. So in that sense, uh, it looks uh, very dangerous and also very well connected. I want to get your view on how you think Macron's uh, reacted towards Liu's comments. Um, the Wall Street Journal says that Liu has embarrassed Macron. Uh, would you agree with that? I should say that I am not happy uh, that for the French president, it took three days to react to such derogatory remarks by Chinese ambassador to France. They were condemned uh, on the international level. And the uh, uh, IPAC, Interparliamentary Alliance uh, on China, of which I am co-chair, has also very swiftly reacted with public statement, which was signed not only by co-chairs and members of IPAC uh, from Europe, uh, because we concentrated on Europe, having in mind uh, this incident's context, but also other uh, well-known parliamentarians, uh, former ministers uh, and uh, high-level officials uh, who are now in parliaments uh, of European countries, very clearly condemning such a statement. Whereas for the President of France, for Monsieur Macron, who uh, well declared that he spoke uh, on behalf of all Europe when he was in China. For him, it took three days to issue quite a concise and not a very harsh statement that no diplomat should talk like that. And uh, well, I'd say that also is, uh, is not a very good signal. And regarding uh, um, uh, behavior of uh, ambassador of China to France, that once again shows they do not respect Macron, they do not consider him seriously, and he is merely a pawn in their game. In Taiwan, the political parties are gearing up for the nation's general election in little more than seven months. In March, former Taiwan President Ma Ying-jeou became the first former Taiwanese president to ever visit China. This is what he said after returning from his 12-day visit. Councillor Miao, is the election a choice between peace or war? I think it's a campaigning propaganda to intimidate <laughs> voters because it's not always the the, uh, the war is not an option for us, and Taiwanese don't want to choose the war. Actually, the Ukraine did not choose war, right? And uh, the you know Polish Poland in World War Two they did not choose war. 
It's just a, a dictator. Its ambitious t was too big and invades those countries. And right now, the Taiwan Strait situation is not caused by Taiwan because we did not do anything that violates the international law, the, uh, international law, and we did not do anything to provoke or to invade or trying to use military force to invade China. No, we did not do anything like that. We just do anything that, uh, you know, what, what we did is that any sovereign country would do. We make friends with other nations and we develop our own economic and we we did buy some weapons, but a uh, defensive weapons to defense ourselves. And how can, how can they say that Taiwanese are, are choosing between peace or war? We are trying to prepare for resist the invasion. And we are trying to make peace in this region, in Asia Pacific. So um, when, when KNT gives the narrative that it's a choice between war and or peace, it's just a trying to they're trying to intimidate the voters that if you don't vote for us you're choosing war mm -hmm. but when we look at the fact that it's not taiwan who is trying to invade other country mm -hmm. so what we we are doing is just a preparation for defense ourselves it's just this mm -hmm. professor tang yeah can you respond uh i think uh, president or the former president ma Yingzhou has uh, <coughs> Is telling the truth. It's really a choice between war and peace, because not only Taiwan, but the United States, because the United States tries to play the Taiwan card to challenge China, and that's the main problem. And Taiwan, naturally, every every Taiwanese wants want, uh, wants peace, but for the United States, because they think, in their opinion. China has been challenging the U.S. role in the world, and that's why the United States tries to intimidate and tries to challenge China, but by playing the Ch Taiwan card. And we all know that the, uh, the big countries do what they want. The small countries do what they must, and that's what we, this is actually our uh, national uh, reason. So we have to have our own way and own wisdom to earn the modus vivendi uh, between the two sides. And that, that's the reason and that's the way that we can strive between um, not only for Taiwan, but also between Taiwan and China and the whole East, uh, East Asian area. So that's the, I will say, uh, President, or well, the former President Ma Yingzhou has really pinpoint the fact and the core of the, the, the whole problematic. I, I think the idea of peace and war is a false binary because no one's pro-war. The, the premise is, is, is silly. Uh, and and I, I agree with City, uh, with, uh, City Councilor Miao. I, I, I think this is a matter of how the KMT is choosing to frame the uh, 2024 election. But, but that's typical for every Taiwanese presidential election. So, so we know from years and decades of public opinion research that in Taiwan, the main issue people vote on is China. Uh, and each presidential election, the way that that issue manifests is different. So in 2020, it was very much about Hong Kong, and that was really the lens through which we saw the China issue. And going into 2024, we see the KMT is very much clearly trying to frame it as an issue of war. Uh, I, I think, again, it's, it's a bit of a risky move because it, it really sort of um, creates a, a very dramatic frame for the, for the 2024 election. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what we really need to see is how effective that's actually going to be for voters, because mm -hmm. it's still very early in the mm -hmm. election season. Uh, we still don't actually know who formally mm -hmm. the KMT nominee is. And, and they're probably going to have some amount of sway over that rhetoric as well. So, you know, even though that is what they seem to be setting themselves up for for 2024, how effective of a strategy that's going to be, I think mm -hmm. time will tell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Professor I would say between Taiwan and China, I mean mm -hmm. the cross strait. Mm -hmm. We don't have any dialogue since years, mm -hmm. since uh, Tsai Ing-wen uh, uh, so, uh, so took office. So what kind office. of dialogue? Tell, tell me what I, happens. No, the the KMT's dialogue, where does that lead? Uh, does that help to stop the unification goal of Xi Jinping? No, uh, unification is, is very remote. So the problem is, 
we have to make peace for the moment. Mm -hmm. So that's why peace accord is actually a kind of solution between the two sides. Mm -hmm. And for instance, uh, the United States has um, often said they oppose the unilateral change of the status quo and by force. Mm -hmm. So that means no relocation, no independence, and no use of force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. no use of force is the most important now for is, is actually a, a vital interest. Mm -hmm. So that's why try to make a kind of peace accord mm -hmm. without changing the status quo. So peace accords need conditions, though. Councillor Miao, do you want yeah. to respond? I think everyone wants to dialogue. Wants a dialogue. Even President Tsai, she have addressed that we welcome dialogue. Uh, and, but it's only one condition that we don't want any political uh, con condition. Because uh, when talk about dialogue, Xi Jinping is the one who didn't answer the phone call. You know, Xi Jinping never calls Taiwan and the President Tsai said, no, I, I don't want to talk with them. No, never. So it's China, it is China that set a very, very high, a very difficult obstacle for the dialogue because China once that we agree the reunification, the unification, and then we will have a dialogue. Mm. But Taiwanese don't want unification with China, right? Mm. Because we, we are a democracy and China isn't. Mm. We want to keep our own de democratic lifestyle. So what is the peace accord? If the peace accord says that Taiwan Strait is the uh, China inter interior efforts and no other uh, foreign countries should uh, uh, intervene, Taiwan and China. And this kind of peace accord mm -hmm. is like uh, just a peace accord between Tibet and, and China, or even, you know, China can deny the Chinese-England agreement between Hong Kong, you know. Even it is the uh, re real international treaty that the United Nations recognizes. And Ch Chinese can say, oh, it is a historical document and don't have any you know, no, no real use. So what, 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 what can we protect? Can we protect us by only a paper? No, we can only rely on our own defense force. You know, uh, you know the, the two Ds, dialogue, of course, very important. But the other D, determination, you know, we have to show the t determination that we are a sovereign nation and we will resist if China invades. So if China did not invade, if China doesn't invade, then there will be no war. This is the real point. Councillor Miao, Professor Tang and Professor Nakman, thank you so much for joining Taiwan Talks today.